All right, and we're back. And so, all right, so I've shared now with you guys the uh, something we've talked about here for a few weeks now in a row. Uh, the idea of the code of ethics for the uh, Society of Professional Engineers. Uh, now, we talked about last week, we talked about this idea of performing services only in the areas of our competence. Uh, we have. Yes. Yeah, Murat. Question. Nope, OK. All right, so. The this next one is interesting because. Mehmet Ali, you you actually asked a question kind of kind of like this is related to this is so one of the <clears throat> canon, one of the fundamental canons of the Society of Professional Engineers is that we will issue public statements only in an objective and truthful manner. Uh, this this could also I mean in a sense this also ties into this whole avoiding deceptive acts as well kind of they kind of go together just generally be truthful be objective uh, and so <clears throat> one of the reasons why this is an interesting one to me is because what happens if stating something truthfully costs us something or costs our company something you know what if uh what if an employer or um someone over you some other researcher for example uh says hey, you know, let's just let's just hide that data let's or, or let's not well you know we don't we let's just throw that that particular data set out or that particular run of that experiment out uh, and not report on that um so what should we do in those scenarios? Like, I mean, obviously the code of ethics kind of tells us what to do, but what, I guess let's take a step back. Take a step back and say, okay, then why does this, why does this exist? Why does this, this canon exist that we shall issue public statements only in an objective and truthful manner and avoid deceptive acts like why do we need to be told uh, to do that what is it that the society is trying to do Yeah, OK, accountability. Explain. Whose accountability? Our our own personal accountability? So we need to hold everyone in the world accountable? All right. When you figure out how to do that, you let me know. Uh, keep everyone accountable for their own actions and not the actions of, of others. Right. But but in this particular case, it's it's about what? It's about the actions of the engineers, right? Yeah, Newman, this is so what I'm sharing here now, I've shared a couple weeks here, is the uh, National Society for Professional Engineers, uh, the Code of Ethics for Engineers. So the idea is so the National, let's say National Society, yeah, National Society. It's an American society, which is where the, what the N means, national. Uh, who was it? Let's see. Somebody, who was it? Oh, I pulled off of the page. That's taken a long time to, to, to load. Uh, somebody in the class shared this other one, the uh, 
acm.org was the uh, for software engineers the software engineering code of ethics which is a little bit of a harder read it's a little bit harder to read it because it's a more detailed and um, well I guess the uh, I guess we're not able to get to the uh, ethics let's see okay so it's just the acm.org okay I guess acm.org is gonna be the problem uh, yeah, but so basically this is a code of ethics that all engineers should adhere to according to um, the National Society of Professional Engineers. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that this could be used for uh, is that if an engineer, let's say I'm working for an engineering firm and I am I'm fired or I'm let go for some reason and I I accuse them of you know firing me for no reason which is all kind of weird but there's no fault stuff anyway uh, America's a weird place but uh, let's say I was fired or something and if they could point to one of these things that I did not do appropriately uh, maybe they said well he was caught lying he was caught making public statements that were not true. Uh, you know, he was, um, you know, he didn't hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public. He, let's say, I, let's say I'm an engineer working for a, an automobile, a car manufacturer, and I allowed some defect that endangered customers' safety uh, in a car. Then they could say, oh, he did not. Uh, adhere to the code of ethics and so that was why he was fired right something like that so that's how this this ethical code could be used but you know accountability but what is accountability what's the, what's the benefit to accountability like if you know if i say things that aren't true but yet you know i don't really hurt anybody what's what's wrong with what's wrong with that You know, back to our discussion. Right. The damage may not be it obvious at first so just because i can't see that it has harmed anyone doesn't mean that it hasn't harmed anyone it's kind of what you're saying okay go with that okay. any, any, anything else so attitude of being able to get away with things. Yeah. Now, what if making a truthful statement may cause problems? I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example from, uh, what's the word? Um, I'll give you an example of something I read recently concerning the pandemic. So there's some evidence, <clears throat> there's, there's, apparently some recorded evidence that early on in the pandemic, you know, a year ago, initially certain organizations like the World Health Organization and others uh, encouraged people not to wear masks. You know, many of the organizations were saying no masks are helpful, but some of the organizations were saying, uh, you know, don't worry about wearing masks. And what they uh, what they found was that the evidence was that the concern on the health professionals part, the World Health Organization and people like that, was that people like myself, common normal people, uh, would go out and buy masks 
to make sure that we had some. And the risk was that health professionals, doctors, nurses, uh, you know, people like that, would then not have access to them because they would run out. Uh, there is some indication that that indeed did happen at times. That there were times where there were shortages of masks early on in the, in the pandemic. And that in an effort to make sure that masks would be available for health professionals, some of the organizations in charge suggested to the general public that masks were not as helpful as they actually knew that they were. Okay. So they said something not true, not, something they did not believe to be true in an effort to have a, um, a better outcome, meaning that health professionals would have access to masks. It was that ethical because according to the conduct, now they're now granted World Health Organization, not engineers, I get it, but according to that code of conduct, they did not state public statements in, a, in an objective and truthful manner, according to what they understood. But it was intended to cause less harm. Right? So was that a violation of an ethical code? Or did the making the statement that they believed to not be true, right? Was that them holding paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public? What happens if these two come into conflict? How does that work out? That's why I asked it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm, I'm asking. What do you guys think? I don't want to tell you what I think. I want to tell you what I want to ask what you guys think. Okay. So, Met Ali, what you're saying, my understanding of your comment, safety first, is that this this is more important this has to come first and so that means if we do if we violate this if we violate this uh fundamental point in order to protect this fundamental point that's okay is that what i understand yeah it could be could be. Right? So that's what I understand you saying, yeah? Okay. I, I'm inclined to, to want to agree with you, Barrick. So what do you mean by that? Like, how how could we? So let's take that example. Now, again, this is this is this example I just gave you. I am not a health professional. I do not work for the World Health Organization. I was not a part of all of this. But I do know that early on in the pandemic, there was conflicting advice concerning the wear, the wearing of masks. I do remember because we looked into it, uh, particularly because my wife, my wife has asthma. And so we knew from, from early on that uh, a respiratory virus like this could be very dangerous for her. So we wanted to make sure that we were protecting her uh, as best we could. I Well, I'll say I wanted to make sure that I was protecting her as best I could. And so I wanted to make sure that if masks were helpful, that we were wearing masks. And I wanted to make sure that if masks were not helpful, that we were not wearing masks. You know, I wanted to make sure. Uh, so I went out and looked. And, and sure enough, there were some health organizations that would say things like wearing masks prevent virus transmission by some, you know, some rate. And it would be other uh, health organizations that would say the opposite that would say 
uh, masks are not shown to have you know any effect on preventing virus transmission and so i remember being very uh confused uh, but we did follow the the guidelines uh, you know, that the government put in place. You know, the government said wear masks when you're in Migros, and so I wore masks every time I was in Migros, even though I noticed some other people weren't. But you know, to each their own. Uh, where was I going with that? So I can understand why. Uh, Right. So yeah, yeah. So Mehmet Ali, you're you're saying, had we told, had the organizations who believed that masks were helpful but said otherwise, had they said, hey, we only have a limited number of masks available right now. We're making them as fast as we can, but we only have a limited number, and we need to have them for our medical professionals, for our doctors and our nurses, and our emergency room uh, workers and stuff. Um, and we said, but we're running low, so we don't, we need everyone to not buy them right now. You're concerned that people would run out and buy masks up because of the limited number that would be available. Is that right? Do I understand your comment right? Yeah. And you know i don't i don't remember there being a problem with this here in turkey but i do remember hearing per people friends of mine uh, in america talking about how they would go to the store and there would be no toilet paper anywhere because people were buying up toilet paper like crazy uh, so you know there's that so i think that's a valid concern Mehmet Ali. i think that is a valid concern uh that people might go out and buy them right but yet i i i am inclined to think like Barrick. i i want to think like Barrick thinks in this right i want to think that there must be some way that we could have explained it to the public right but that's a little bit off. I, I, I'm, I'm I'm trailing. I'm getting off a little bit off topic because the whole because the whole point is is lying, right? Um, yeah. I mean, I think I think I might have some friends that still have toilet paper that was bought over a year ago. Uh, so, uh, the but the question before us is is making non-truthful statements to the public if it is done in an effort to protect the safety and welfare of the public does that make it okay and suddenly does that make it ethical does that make it not a violation of an ethical code of conduct that includes that bullet point And, and these questions should not be easy to answer, right? They're very complex. <laughs> the they used to go to an office and the office had a steady supply and now they go home. Nice. So I guess the so I guess what I'm getting at for you personally. For you personally, you you're working for a company. Does something. I don't know. Your boss asks you to make a statement that you know is false in a public forum, but it is it is intended. They tell you that it is intended to protect the public. What do you do? So 
So in this, let's let's uh, let's back up and say that this whole thing with the mask thing. Let's say that's just hypothetical. Let's say that was just a hypothetical uh, situation. You are a medical professional working for the World Health Organization. You've seen the data. According to what you see, you've you've come to the conclusion that masks can help people not not transmit the virus. But WHO says nope. WHO says we in order to help protect our doctors and nurses, we need you to say that masks don't have an effect. Okay. If he convinces you of the benefit to the public. Yeah, Seth has the uh, there's an acronym CYA. Um, Seth is having that attitude uh, by saying the company says. All right, or the World Health Organization says. All right, if I'm working for them. But Mehmet Ali, if you said if he can, if your boss convinces you that it's worth it, is that what you're saying? Okay, so now set. So you're thinking about a little bit more like politician, maybe, right? Say something that can be interpreted one way. And, but it's not technically a lie, so therefore it's okay. All right. How how would you have done that in this scenario? You have a medical person who medical uh, uh well, just someone, someone who works for the World Health Organization, absolutely convinced that masks are helpful, but needs to but needs to uh make sure that people don't go out and buy them all up. Right, see, because Barrick's pulling out a really great point is if it comes out later that you that you lied to the public, that could be a big problem later in politicians or other or a competing company. Right, if we're talking about a company doing this, not not a not a health organization, uh, could cause you a lot of problems later, right? Yeah, so it can be very dangerous, right? In, in fact, we you see that now, right? You see that now with a lot of the um, some of you know what's referred to as conspiracy theories that are coming out and using a lot of these uh, conflicting statements. Yeah, there you go. Ma masks won't protect you. Stay, just stay home. But yeah, there, there a lot of the a lot of uh, people who be, who are believing uh, certain types of conspiracy theories that are out there right now uh, are using conflicting statements. Um, some of them by the same organization where where uh, I believe it may have been the WHO, it may have been the World Health, World Health Organization that initially said masks are are not shown to be effective, but then a few months later are encouraging everyone to wear masks, right? So that, that may be something like that where you have the same organization <clears throat> back to back stating conflicting things. Yeah. And so I've also, but I've all, and in uh, similar to that with, with more pandemic stuff, but I've also read an article that talks about uh, the public statements regarding the vaccine that because a lot of the uh, scientists and researchers are trying to be truthful about the uh, effectiveness of the vaccine and what you can and can't do and how, you know and all this certain things where it's you know just because you get the shot doesn't mean you're automatically 
can go out and do whatever you want. And because they're trying to be truthful, it's uh, in some places causing people to not want to get the vaccine at all because they're saying, oh, it's not going to be helpful. It's not going to do anything good. So I might as well not get it. Right. Which so being truthful in terms of some of the negative side effects in terms of some of the uh, it's not 100 percent effective. Yeah. yeah. So let's see Murat John. Who should have taken account that this, should have taken account of that? This fact will be revealed and they will lose their reputation because we won't trust them anymore, right? I'm inclined. I'm thinking I'm agreeing with Seth. I'm agreeing with Seth. The, the side effect of being dead is more serious than any other side effect the vaccine might might bring. Although I have joked with people, I've joked with people that whenever I finally get the vaccine, I'll be uh, looking forward to being able to do more pro productivity with an extra arm or two. I only joke that way with, with certain people like you guys. So. Right, so Murad John is saying the immediate the immediate benefit of, of lying to the people and having masks available for medical professionals should have been weighed against the long term detriment, the long term problems that were would have been encountered because of the, the lack of faith in their reputation. Right. And that's a great point. Right. Which would have been worse? To have no masks available early on while they're trying to make them or later. But at this, but later have a great reputation that people can trust or. Possibly the current situation again. I don't know all the exact details. But the current situation where. They may have gained masks for medical professionals on the front end on the beginning of the pandemic, but now there are people that are not sure if they can trust what the WHO says. The largest organization uh, in the world who's in charge of uh, of containing such things as this pandemic. Big problem. So. But it's tough, right? Right? Because on the one hand, we want to believe that people are reasonable. We want to believe that if we give them the information, if we give them, um, if we tell them like what Berk, I think it was Berk said earlier. Uh, Uh, can't, I, mean, I don't remember. We want we want to believe that if people are told, hey, masks are important for medical professionals, and it, yes, they'd be helpful for you too, but let's let's hold off and make sure our medical professionals get what they need first. We would like to think that people would be reasonable and do that, right? But I think, as we've joked here about the toilet paper thing, and as a couple of other things that we've also, you know things that we've all seen. Right? People aren't always 100% reasonable either. So, you know, it's the it's an enigma, right? It's a it's a dilemma. Yeah. Which is why all these things are ethical dilemmas, right? Because there is no easy one-way answer to this question. Yeah. That could have that could have worked. Get people to use their influence, right? What is their, their social media? There's a word for like social media influencers, something like that. I'm I'm old, so I don't know all these things that you young people know. Maybe we maybe they could have used people to uh, ask people to use their influence to help the situation. Maybe. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a tough situation. So. Oh. Let me uh, let me pull something up real quick. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Let's. Where am I? I need to go here. I realized it was something I was supposed to talk about here and then and, and just completely forgot to bring it up with you guys. OK, uh, so these are the topics here. Let me do one other thing. about there's a form that got posted as well. I'd like everyone to go ahead and take care of that within the next week. All right. All right. So you need to you what, what I need you to do is I need you to choose which one if, if you've already done this great. OK, that's fine. Um, you, you don't need to resubmit it, but if you haven't done this, go ahead and get this done within the next week. Just tell, all it is very simple. It's just you, I'm going to choose one of these. You're going to choose one of these two for the shorter paper and choose the other one for the longer paper. OK, um, I probably should have just made this a one question quiz or a one question form uh, to make it easier. But, you know, I learned. I, hopefully I learned from my mistake, but the details of that are available in the assignment and the reason why I'm wanting this to get it sooner rather than later is because I need to schedule these uh, presentations. What we're looking to do is the week of April 26th. So our class would meet April 28th that week. I'm looking to start presentations then. It's very close, right? Less than a month. Uh, so the earlier presentations, because it'll be a much longer time before your final paper is due. Uh, therefore, um, I'm, you know, I'm. You won't have as much time to prepare your presentation, but the only way to give you guys as much time as you need to be able to present is I'm going to have to put presentations on five, four or five weeks worth of courses, worth of uh, meetings. Uh, so and there's one and maybe two holidays. We got the Ramazan Baidam on May 12th, perhaps. Uh, and then we have um, uh, Genschlik Baidam, uh, the Ata Turk uh, Sports can I, Day. Can I, excuse me, can I go again for sure. Avdic if, if it's possible? Let's see. Wait, you, are you? did you guys choose the same topic? Since I see people are using similar topics, I would like to oppose Erdinç Türk if possible, of course. OK, so you want to take this one here, huh? Yes, if if that's not a problem. Yeah, and here's here's what I was going to suggest. So let me uh, let me put your name in there, Meli. All right, so I've got you there. You didn't take any other topic, did you? You didn't have your name in either. OK. All right. What I would suggest is for those of you who have kind of opposing topics, maybe even kind of share uh, share resources, right? Share some of those things that you found, because one of the things that uh, one of the things that you're tasked with doing uh, in this is being able to present and refute the opposing argument. Right. And so what better way to find out what the best opposing argument is than to talk to the person researching the opposing side. All right. OK, so yeah, so Meli and Erdinch, you guys could talk to each other and you can tell him, Erdinch, you can tell Meli what, what your best argument is and Meli, you could tell Erdinch what your best argument is. And uh, so you guys could work together to be able to get um, uh, 
get a more better understanding of a more better to get a better understanding of the topic. All right. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule. Depending on how many people decide that they want to have the longer presentation be the ethical argument versus the literature review uh, will determine whether I have the ethical argument presentations first or second will the, be, be determined by uh, how many people do each. OK. Uh, so. But I don't know if Air Dinch wants to present his ethical. I think Air Dinch may have chosen to present his literature review. So but what would be fun is if two if the two of you the on each side choose uh, a certain of a, of a certain topic both choose to present your ethical argument then we could even have like a debate style uh, argument in the uh, class meeting so Oh, no, that's the spreadsheet. You're talking about the form. Let me. I thought I posted it. Sure. Let's see this form here. I'll do it here. I'll post it there as well. There you go. OK. So I think I posted it in the team chat or team channel or something the other day so yeah so what would be fun would be for if any of you choose uh just let me know what melly you and air dench let me know what you guys decide if you guys want to have a little fun debate in class that would be uh that would be nice uh, uh i'm in favor guys... of the debate because we can make research and maybe we can show our resource than making a blind, uh, you know, debate, then we can use resources to show whether we are right or not. Yeah. That I would also be great. like defending the controversial subjects, so I think that would be fun for me. Yeah, I think that would be great. Uh, I'll, I'll look forward to that. All right. Yeah, so go ahead and get those form, the forms filled in, and if you have not given me uh sent me your information for a topic uh let's see i have five of you five of you have not sent me uh have not contacted me about a topic so go ahead and do that fill out the form this week send me a topic and a side uh, an affirmative or negative this week and so that we i can go ahead and schedule out your presentations all right all right, well, thanks, guys. If there aren't any other comments, yeah, so it was good. It was, I felt like this conversation was good because, you know, kind of like with a lot of ethical dilemma questions is we come to the end, and in some ways we we don't have an answer. We've had some discussion. We've tried to understand different points of view. We still don't have an answer, uh, which is okay. It's okay to not have an answer to a question like this. Um, because it's not it's not as simple um, as it might seem. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I look forward uh, to uh, I look forward to all the presentations you guys are preparing and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Uh, uh, I said. I see you, you mean let me see. Last topic. You mean the space exploration that Murat John uh, proposed? All right. You got it. Your name is there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good afternoon, and I'll see you in a week.